What's up guys and welcome back to another video where we are going to be looking over a celebrity's car collection. We're making one of these videos every week, posting every Sunday one of these videos. And all you have to do is comment down below the name of somebody you'd like to see in next week's video and we're going to take the person who is the most recurring. Now you are a ton to comment for this week's guest. This week we're talking about Elon Musk. <laughs> You guys probably all know Elon Musk, the founder of PayPal, SpaceX, Tesla, the boring company, so many incredible projects. You know, one of the great innovators of our generation. He also happens to be a big car guy, obviously, having started Tesla and has had quite a few really interesting and kind of wacky cars. Now, his net worth has just tipped over $70 billion. Seven zero. 70 billion. He is by far the wealthiest person that we have spoken about so far in this series of videos. Yet, he does not have the biggest collection. And that prize still goes to Mr. Ralph Lauren, who has a measly net worth of six billion. <laughs> let's get right into things. We're gonna, let's go from old cars up to more modern cars with Elon Musk. And when I say old, I mean literally the first mass produced automobile ever. 1908, the Ford Model T was starting to be produced and Elon Musk actually has one of those in his garage. He did not buy it, it was a gift from a friend of his who knew Elon's obsession with innovation and obviously the Model T is arguably the most important car of all time. It was the car that kind of generalized the use of the automobile and allowed people to own these things as you know, it wasn't just a luxury for the ultra, ultra, ultra rich. It became something that was a bit more generalized. And as we know now, that is effectively what Elon Musk and Tesla have been doing with the electric car. So really relevant, really cool to see that he's got one of those in his collection. Elon's first first actual personal car, really cool car actually, it's a BMW 320i, which he bought for $1,400. This is a car from 1978, and I mean, as a first car, pretty bloody cool. I mean, to be able to drive around in a BMW 320i, it's got the kind of classic BMW kidney grills. It's a real classic now. They're running a lot more than those $1,400 now to get one in good nick. But that wasn't enough for Elon Musk. He is someone who's obviously reaching for the best. And when he was younger, he'd seen in a classic car magazine, a Jaguar E-Type. And had always said that one day he would earn it. Well, as soon as he could, he would own a Jaguar E-Type. So when he got a $40,000 check through his company Zip2 back in the day, he ended up going straight to buy a Jaguar E-Type. The car was a 1967 car, absolutely beautiful, uh, arguably one of the most gorgeous designs of all time. There is a really interesting story, I'm sure there's videos about it, about how the car was actually launched at the Geneva Motor Show and just driven down there. I think it's a it's one of the all-time greats and definitely one of the best looking. So seeing kind of the design aspects that Elon Musk has taken with his own car company now with Tesla's, um, you can kind of see those rounded edges that maybe, just maybe, are inspired by the E-Type. We're now moving on to a car that you guys definitely know about called Wet Nelly, a Lotus Esprit from 1976 that featured in The Spy Who Loved Me, a James Bond movie. And it was a car that transformed, I mean, you've, you've all definitely seen clips, legendary. It's what made Lotus and the Esprit so famous, that white amphibious car that transformed itself to be able to, well, as the name indicates, amphibious, go in the sea. Apparently, Elon Musk was obsessed with the movie and the car back in the day, so when it came up at auction, he picked it up for $920,000. The car does not convert, uh, it is basically an art piece, so very expensive to pay for a car that isn't actually amphibious, cannot go underwater, and does not transform itself into a car. But the history behind it, and now the fact that it sits in Elon Musk's collection, kind of adds even more history to the car, so I'm sure it's actually worth over a million dollars now. He has, however, said that rather than just leaving it the way it is, he wants to actually make it able to transform and use a Tesla electric power plant to power it. So apparently they're working on that, and it's gonna be an electric, amphibious, James Bond, Lotus Esprit 
in his collection at some point, which um, that has to be one of the coolest cars in the world. Another one of the coolest cars in the world, of course, the legendary McLaren F1, which held the top speed record at over 240 miles an hour for many, many, many years. Elon Musk picked one of these up in 1997. It was one of only seven US imported cars. At the time, apparently, he was deciding between buying a house in Palo Alto, California, or buying the McLaren F1, and decided to go for the F1, which was a hugely expensive car back then. I mean, still is now, they're worth over $15 million. He bought this car and actually daily drove it, and drove it from LA to San Francisco and back every week and put 11,000 miles on his silver McLaren F1, which was chassis number 67 of 106 made worldwide. 11,000 miles, and then as he had Peter Thiel, his business partner and uh, associate in PayPal, in the passenger seat with him after an investment meeting, driving back, Peter Thiel apparently was like, show me what this thing can do. And, you know, quoted from Elon Musk, he said, I used those famous last words of, watch this and ended up spanking it into a wall and completely destroying the car. And he didn't actually even have insurance on it. He said, yeah, I'm not gonna be that guy who crashed as a McLaren F1. And he ended up being exactly that guy who crashed a McLaren F1 and ended up having to fix it. It was able to be fixed and it was actually sold in 2011, I believe, afterwards. But yeah, again, a car with a lot of history. How cool to buy a McLaren F1 has to be, you know, one of the few which was actually daily driven. What made this car so famous, of course, was also the three seat layout. So you could have two passengers with you, which was kind of cool. BMW uh, V12, as mentioned, I mean, just, yeah, top 10 most legendary cars of all time and obviously worth an absolute fortune today. So even though he crashed it, apparently sold it for a profit. And yeah, those famous watch this last words have become somewhat legendary. Now let's get on to his daily drivers, which ended up actually leading him to, you know, having a huge impact on the Tesla cars that he now makes. First of which was a BMW M5 tuned by Hamann, which is a German tuner who had power, over 600 horsepower on the V10 M5, so awesome looking. They also, you know, put a body kit on them. And um, this was a car that apparently inspired Elon Musk a lot in terms of its power, being able to have five people in a car, you know, five doors, big boot, and yet being able to achieve kind of such performance was what really inspired him later on with the Model S. So we probably have a lot to thank, you know, Hamann and the BMW M5 for because it has then led to creating one of the most important cars we've had in the last 10 years, which was the Tesla Model S. Fairly niche though to have gone and gotten it modified by Hammond, but pretty cool. Another one of his famous dailies as he had a family and children is he actually bought himself an Audi Q7. Now this was the perfect daily to be able to fit the kids in the back, but this is where the idea for the famous Falcon doors on the Model X came from because Elon Musk apparently really struggled accessing the third row, the rear seat in his Q7, and therefore wanted to make a car that was much more accessible for parents with a lot of kids or people who often had a lot of friends with them. So the Model X now famously has those Falcon doors which open up and the seats which can slide forward re really easily so that you can access that third row seat. So thank you, Audi. Thank you, the Q7, for allowing Elon Musk to discover this default which has now led to an epic design in the Model X. Another interesting one is a Porsche 911. Elon Musk had a Porsche 911 Turbo, which uh, he absolutely adored, apparently again, kind of loving that usability and performance, but hated the fuel economy. And apparently this was the car which got him into kind of EV and electric power a lot because he originally really wanted to actually put an electric engine in his 911 and had found a garage in California who could do it and offered them apparently a quarter of a million dollars to put an electric engine engine in his 911 and they didn't do it. So in the end, he ended up being presented to someone who at the time owned a company developing electric engines and cars, which he bought and has now famously become Tesla. So a huge thank you again to Porsche and to the 911 Turbo for allowing Elon Musk to discover this need for electric power and developing the first ever Tesla, which was the Tesla Roadster. And the first Tesla Roadster ever made, I was gonna say was, but technically is still owned by Elon Musk, which he daily drove for ages in the development phase of the Model S and Model 3 and Model X, etc. But he has since sent that car into space with a space mannequin in the driver's seat and, and a space song playing on repeat. And the car will be in space with the song, with the mannequin for millions, maybe billions of years. And it's technically still owned by Elon Musk. It was his personal 
Tesla Roadster, which he sent up into space. I mean, nuts. Who does that? Who sends their car up into space? Really, really cool project though. Cool publicity stunt as well. And uh, yeah, it's still up there somewhere floating around. Today, Elon Musk says he actually uses Tesla Model S Performance the most as a daily driver. Occasionally, we'll use also the Model 3 and then his Tesla Model X, of course, when he's got the kids with him and he needs a little bit more space. I assume he's pro, I don't know if he has one that he keeps at home. He's been seen in a bunch of different ones so is it just a case of just take whichever one is lying around or if he actually has his own personal one but of course he's now mainly driving around in Tesla. He was also seen actually recently taking the Tesla Cybertruck to dinner in Nobu in Malibu uh, which is so I mean is that thing even registered is pro I don't know how that even works but he was yeah seen driving around in that took it to Nobu we also took it out with Jay Leno in a video we'll put a link somewhere to that but uh, really cool to see him using his own products and of course that's why he developed them because uh, he, he kind of wants to push forward with what's going and there's going to be a lot coming from him kind of innovating and pushing the automobile business forward and I think what he's achieved by you know developing these electric vehicles he has really pushed the business forward and, and put other automakers into overdrive to try and basically keep up I mean what they're doing now with the new Tesla Roadster which is going to come out is absolutely insane now I'm actually going to get my phone out because I just want to finish this on a note which is it's not a car but I came across this in an article and I think it's just so cool he also owns an Aero L39 Albatross from 1994 what is that you may ask I asked myself the same thing that is a Russian fighter jet developed in the 1960s which made its debut with the Czech military in the 1970s. Now, why does Elon Musk have one of these? He quoted here when speaking about the plane said, this is probably the most fun plane I have is a Russian fighter jet. I mean, who says that? That is, first of all, the most eccentric yet baller sentence I've ever heard in my whole life. He says, literally, it is just like in Top Gun. You're no more than a couple of hundred feet above the ground following the contour of the mountains. We came up to a mountain, did a vertical climb up the side of it, inverted, turned upside down. Yes, that was fun. It's like a roller coaster, only you go much farther up and down, but your butt hurts if you fly in it more than an hour the seats are really hard. I mean, that's a first world problem when your Russian fighter jet seats are a little bit too, a little bit too hard, are these? Anyways, thought I'd end up on that just because it's so cool, even though it's not a car. Hope you enjoyed the video. Really fun actually making this one and he's got such a cool selection from the McLaren F1 to that Lotus Esprit to a fighter jet to all of the Teslas, of course. Comment down below which is your favorite and coolest of Elon Musk's cars. And also please comment down below the name of a celebrity you'd like to see in next week's video. And we'll be checking out all the comments to make sure next week we have the person who is the most recurring. Thank you as always for watching this. Hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. Thumbs up because it really helps the channel and I'll be seeing you again very soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.